Yes, I, I can see you and I'm, I'm very happy. I would love to, to be with you. Um, but as I said, uh, um, I'm just on my way tomorrow. I will drive very early to, to Vino flying the Grand Prix over there. So uh, Sweden would be a little bit a detour. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but uh, please stop because we are short of time and we are also having a line of climb. Okay, good. Well, um, the screen is yours. <laughs> Fine. Well, um, I'm not very good in, in, uh, in uh, uh, giving presentations. Um, so I just uh, would like to, to talk a little bit. I don't know exactly what um, uh, what Luca told you. I'm sure he told you a lot about the technique of the, uh, yeah. of the FES. And um, I would rather like to, to tell you a bit, little bit uh, what you can actually do with this kind of, of gliders and, and let you join all my, my fun uh, I had um, um, in, in the past flying the, uh, these gliders. You know, I took part at... Uh, at several uh, e-glide uh, competition, uh, just uh, uh, looking into in, in, in the in the crowd, raise your hand. Who who has heard about e-glide competition? Who knows about the rules? Yes. Oh, okay, yes. that's quite a bit. And who has flown already one? Huh? Ah, no, right. e-glide. No, no, e no, no, e no, e I think no one here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Um, well, I joined. As I said, I flew the first one in uh, in Pavulo in Italy. And um, and uh, and the second one in Großricos Walde, which is in uh, south uh, uh, in eastern uh, Germany, um, and this was one of the uh, the nicest uh, experiences in competition flying um, I had so far. And I really see a bright future in this kind of uh, uh, flying, because uh, you simply have so mu uh, much more opportunities uh, uh, to fly. Um, well, uh, uh, you have uh, you can fly more or less at all uh, um, kind of, of weather situations. Um, I mean, in uh, Großrikos Walde, just for, um, we had, uh, it was in, in, in September, I mean, uh, actually after our typical uh, German season, um, the weather was extremely bad. Sometimes we only had, uh, uh, we had less than 1,000 meters uh, uh, ceiling um, in a, well, not so fantastic terrain. Uh, however, it was, piece of cake to fly uh, there and maybe even better was um, when we flew in um, in, in Pavulo uh, um, this was combined uh, with the 13.5 meter world championships and it was quite funny because uh, uh, we were a little bit in the second row I mean uh, men, people were focused on this 13.5 meter c contest I don't know why but that's a different story um, and uh, so the first day, um, they were gridded um, on, on the airfield. Uh, they were all launched. And after, uh, well, 15 minutes, the first one came down. After half an hour, another five came down. And after an hour, the whole fleet uh, was back uh, on the ground. Um, and then they canceled the day um, for this World Championship class. And then they pushed us on the grid, and we had a wonderful uh, competition uh, uh, day. We simply used a little bit the engine um, to fly uh, into a little bit better weather, and then we used classical thermals, and uh, every now and then we also used the engine. Um, because, uh, as you may know, um, the idea of, of this e -Clyde competition is uh, that you have, that, uh, that you are allowed uh, to use uh, two kilowatt hours of uh, battery capacity, which is about 50% uh, of the capacity of the batteries. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you're not only allowed to use them, the idea is to use them in an, opt in, in an optimum uh, way. And this offers you many, many uh, opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, so not just flying at uh, weather where you normally can't fly, uh, but also uh, flying into areas which are normally maybe too dangerous to fly. Pavulo, for example, was actually the most uh, difficult and probably the most dangerous uh, place I have flown so far because all the, the valleys are like this and there is hardly any outlanding possibility. Um, or for the whole um, competition area, we had three official landing fields. And the, the way I was flying, I was simply, uh, I put this uh, field in my um, LX and whenever um, the final glide uh, to these fields uh, went from, from green to yellow, I simply switched on the engine 
Um, so I was always in uh, in, in good, safe um, final glide um, uh, altitude uh, to reach this uh, this field. And funny it was that um, flying in this uh, in this extremely safe manner, you can use all your concentration to actually fly faster to to put your focus on. Uh, in, um, to optimize uh, uh, the task. That's actually a, uh, uh, an, an, an interesting experience. And often I saw these poor 13.5 meter guys who were really struggling hard, uh, sometimes in not so easy uh, conditions. And we simply flew over them and had all fun of the, uh, of the world. Um, another very interesting experience was that, I mean, in typical competition flying, this tactical flying is a uh, um, it's extremely important. I mean, leeching, just following the others. Um, with the e glide you can't do that. Um, because the, the, um, simply the fact that um, uh, you cannot see if your competitor has the engine on or not um, means that if you see somebody, for example, on your flam and he's climbing with two meters, well, you don't know if he's actually using a thermal with two meters. Um, maybe he has the engine on, you can't see. And therefore, uh, very often um, people rushed into my um, my thermal or when I was just rich soaring and then they suddenly found out mm, that's not a good thermal, it just looked like. And then they had to think um, about their own decisions in, um, in competition, uh, in this co type of competition. Very, very funny, I must say. Um, of course, um, uh, also the, uh, um, the possibilities of uh, um, um, using different power settings is quite interesting. That's, for example, a big difference compared to uh, a combustion engine where you usually use uh, the engine on or off. Um, with the uh, FES, you can reduce the power. And the most interesting part is uh, to, to um, put a power setting to approximately four or five kilowatt only. That's just good enough to, to keep altitude. Um, and uh, while doing this, um, you still have um, uh, you're still in a in a in a kind of a, a soaring mode. This means you have uh, um, almost no noise. I mean, you can hear the variometer, you can hear the the radio. Um, you have uh, more or less no vibration, so you can feel actually the uh, the lift. Um, and best of all is because you have the propeller right in the front and the um, total energy probe in the rear, uh, you have a full compensated variometer uh, with the engine on. This means you can actually um, follow the lifting lines, you can uh, um, center or you can uh, uh, just, um, uh, if, uh, to, uh, if you want to find the, uh, the center of the lift, uh, you can use, do this with the engine on. Um, because you're actually in a in a in a in a soaring mode. That's also a new uh, um, 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 uh, finding or something. Uh, I had to get used to uh, flying with the uh, glider. But um, actually, the philosophy. I mean, if you take off with an FES glider, um, uh, you must change a bit your 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 mindset. Because normally, I mean, if you if you fly with a normal combustion engine or with a retractable engine. Uh, in, once you started the engine, um, I mean, normally it is just avoiding an outlanding. So um, engine on, flight off, I always say. Um, however, if you um, start with, if you take off with the right attitude, flying an FES, um, you can say, I mean, engine on, um, and then the experience mode is switched on, and you or the exploration mode is on. So you can really try. Uh, many things with the help of uh, of the engine. Um, for example, um, if you fly in in mountainous terrain, uh, you can see uh, you can check if um, if the ridge is working. If you're not quite sure if the wind is blowing from the correct side, and you can do this without any danger because you simply have the engine on, um, and uh, and and try. And if you if you find out, okay, the lift um, uh, the ridge is working. You can reduce the power, and if you're still ah. climbing, you can uh, completely uh, shut down the engine. And and this is of course um, uh, takes only seconds um, uh, to switch it on or off. Or if you're um, trying, uh, if you're still in a, uh, uh, not using the engine, if you go to to lower places, um, 
you can do this because the engine is is extremely reliable um, and in the very worst case if it, if it does not work i mean you have uh, no extra drag you yeah, just remain a glider and you can um, continue to fly just to to use your your plan b flying to a field however uh, in all my uh, uh, FES flying, I never had this problem because the engine is extremely uh, mm -hmm. reliable and you can actually tr uh, trust it. And, um, and if you fly in this, um, um, in this kind of um, uh, conditions, uh, you can use much more of, um, well, of the day. You can take off early, you can uh, land uh, later. And best of all, you can increase, you can reach, uh, uh, you can enrich your season. Very often here in, in southern Germany, um, when the thermal condition is already over, um, I'm still um, a, a, a go flying just with a little bit aid of, uh, of the engine um, uh, because there's hardly not any day where there is simply no lift at all. And it's very, very interesting to find out uh, even at uh, conditions where you normally wouldn't fly, just with a little bit extra help of the engine to uh, to to find this um, out, and it's of course very fun, um, and you can learn it tremendously. I made once a flight um, um, going to the into the mountains and flying back home late in the uh, in the evening. I arrived low at the Schwäbische Alb, a bit too low, so I used the engine just to go back to safety altitude, um, and then I kept on the engine with very little power. And then just try it over this little forest if there's some little lift or there was a valley and there was a little bit of wind and I just tried and um, and I could always uh, um, keep the altitude I even climb a little bit 20 meters here 30 meters there and finally I had enough altitude to go back home and and uh, while you're flying in this in this um, in this mode um, you hardly need uh, uh, um, any energy. So at the end, the, the battery was still, I don't know, uh, 70 or 80 percent full. Um, so uh, um, the consumption is very low if you're just uh, um, if you're just in this in this uh, zero sync uh, infinitive uh, glide angle uh, mode. Um, yeah, what 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 else? Um, uh, it is an, another way of of using. Um, uh, this engine is now with with two seaters um, on the um, on, on the focus. Um, I think it offers um, a completely new way of training uh, unexperienced pilots because you, uh, without um, um, stress, uh, you can go with the engine uh, to places and show uh, students how to soar, how to fly before you go to the basic training, like taking off and landing. And so you can, from the very first minute sitting in the glider, you can show um, the, uh, the students uh, the real beauty um, um, of our sport um, instead of the classical uh, patterns. Um, yes, another um, interesting aspect is um, uh, I was once uh, on a safari flight, uh, flying also from, from our airfield, from the Hanweide to the um, uh, uh, into the Austrian Alps and uh, I was a little bit late um, and at the end I did not fly back home. I simply landed on another airfield. Um, I slept there in a hangar, very classical. Um, next morning I wanted to take off and then the, the guys from the club came to me with a bare bad face and said, oh Tilo, bad news, our tow plane is out of order. I said, uh, yeah, well, but you have a winch? And I said, yes, but with a winch you have no possibility to get away from this airfield. And I said, well, yes, I have. And um, so I uh, used the uh, the winch um, to th about 300 meters, switched on the engine and cruised about five, eight kilometers to the next little ridge. Um, and uh, it was just very early in the morning and I was able to, um, um, to, to start feeling that there was some lift. And at the end of the day, with the uh, help of the engine, I was able to find, well, extremely weak lift, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, but I had a wonderful day flying, I mean, taking off uh, um, on uh, just with the help of the um, of the winch. So um, just as I said, there are uh, hundreds of, of uh, uh, new possibilities. Another very nice feature, of course, is if you're flying in, I don't know if in Sweden this is a problem, but here in our area, it is a big problem, is noise. Um, 
Uh, for example, if you fly in the mountain um, and you, if you use the engine, you have this normally with this, this echo and uh, and people are really turning their hats and uh, and, and and look grim grimy to you. Um, if you make noise with, for example, with a combustion engine, tow plane or whatever, with an FES, I experience you can even cross by uh, pedestrians or, or, or mountain hikers. They won't even turn their hat. Um, because uh, you hardly make any uh, any noise. So from the environmental point of view, uh, you have um, a lot of um, uh, additional uh, uh, possibilities. You don't have to fear that our sport is uh, um, uh, is um, uh, focused to uh, to well uh, bad reputation by uh, by noise. So um, I'm really a extremely big friend, and I'm uh, I think uh, this this. Um, uh, flying in competition with this uh, uh, glider, um, with this kind of gliders, uh, uh, offers really a new world. And I see many people who are uh, who are curious on doing new things, who would like to um, uh, uh, create their own flights, uh, but maybe sometimes are uh, people are sick of the classical, very tactical competition flying. So with the help of the FES um, in a, in an e-glide competition. Uh, it, it simply offers uh, offers a lot of new opportunities. I hope <laughs> I'm, I just look. I think my time is over, and I hope <laughs> I didn't bore you with all these uh, different aspects. And uh, uh, yes, maybe you have some questions. Questions? Yeah. Yeah. Hans Fork is on here. And hi, Tilo. Hi. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Good. Uh, is it possible to retrofit an old uh, viscous XLT with uh, with a base? Uh, first of all, we have to get the duodiscus ready at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is still uh, some some work to be done. I mean, the prototype is in the air, but still with uh, um, um, with the. Um, uh, um, system from from the single seater, um, so we still need some time. Um, it's not. Uh, I mean, if it is an XLT, it has the uh, the box from the structural uh, point of view. It should be possible from the certification standpoint. Uh, stand of, uh, point of view, uh, I it's. Uh, I, I simply can't tell you. At least it's not imp not impossible. Okay. Mm -hmm. More questions? No, it does not seem so. It's okay. One more, one more question, Tila. Will you win in Santa Bon? <laughs> That's plan. Well, my plan A is to have fun in Santa Bon. That's all what takes there. Yeah. But I have for sure. I mean, with the discus. Um, I mean, we fly with handicap there. I have a great machine. I have uh, the widest variety of, of, of wing loading with this glider. Um, in maybe we have difficult conditions. Well, I'm um, I'm optimistic. <laughs> but fun is the biggest uh, 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 motivation to go to there. Okay. Thanks. No more questions then. Okay, Tilo. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> And good and good luck in Santa Barbara. Uh, thank you and thanks for listening and and have fun, have a nice evening. And I would love to join you and have a beer together with you. I will do this now at home. <laughs> yeah, you are welcome anytime. Bye bye. <laughs> thank you. Bye bye.